so guys it's uh, easy here um, I'm going to show you some or make some tutorials about making custom units um, the first part is about the basics where we don't need any 3d program nor 2d program like Adobe Photoshop um, so we're going to just make for the first part start from zero and at the basics we're going to learn how to use uh, the pack file manager or the, the newer one the rusted pack file manager by Frodo and also of course the official modding tools because that is the way of course how we go into mods and then you get acquainted with it so first we need to download the official modding tools and we can find it in steam so we open steam and we go to library and in library we find a name or a tab called tools we click on tools and then here down we scroll down we found a shogun 2 assembly kit and we install it we just double click on it next and we finish downloading it um, also what we need is another tool called uh, pack file manager or rusted pack file manager um, I will show you directly first I'm going to show you what you have to do with the assembly kit when we finish downloading it going to downloading it So we just uh, finished downloading the assembly kit so what we do is we're just going to close steam and we go to our c drive now by default steam is installed on our c drive but sometimes people install it on different drive steam like a d or e drive then of course you have to find the steam installation folder into one of those uh, hard drives but most of the time most people have steam installed in their c drive so we go to local drive c windows 10 we go to program files 86 uh, we go to steam um, steam apps common total war shogun 2 and we go to modding so here we see a folder called modding and here we see that it installed a lot of files but also one other uh, zip file called modding.zip so we uh, extract of course the zip file now we can it do it different ways we can do it the normal standard way the windows one that is extract all or i have a program called 7zip you can use 7zip or some people uh, use winrar uh, winrar is totally the same so i'm going to extract the files didn't extract it all so we have to delete it again I, I still extract it so it can sometimes it depends of which hard drive you have if you have a normal mechanical hard drive it can take a bit longer uh, I have an M.2 uh, a PCI Express hard drive so it's a bit faster so you just have to be patient and let it be extracted so now we have all the files here so we have the extracted uh, modding zip now is we have normal extracted modding folder now um, what do we have to do now is actually we have to copy or, or cut it out of the C folder for example I added my version into my documents folder and here you can see for example modding shogun 2 total war i've installed it here created a different name but it's the same thing and the reason why i don't put it on the c drive is because um, with the uac with the user access control it sometimes uh, sometimes it doesn't write the the mod packs correctly so it's better we don't use the c drive so what i'm going to do i already have the file so i'm going to delete it because we don't need it 
So uh, you of course you copy the file to desktop or documents like I have done here. So here you have the folder in your documents folder or in your desktop or whenever wherever you want but not in your C drive. That's better not. So now we have the official modding tools. Now where we now we need something else and that is the uh, rusted pack file manager. Now for that we go to Total Wars uh, twcenter.net so twcenter.net and we click enter I'll put everything of course in the description so, so you know uh, you have the links directly to to all the tools so um, we go to forums and we go to uh, Shogun 2 And we go to uh, the workshop, Shogun 2 mod workshop. Uh, we go to tools, tutorials, and resources. And then we look here tool rusted back file manager now supports Shogun 2. We click on it. And here in the first page, uh, we have a link towards its main page where you found uh, the tool to download. Now I will directly put the link into the description so you can download it directly, it's much easier. So here we have the main page of his tool made by Frodo45127. It's a very good tool, so better than pack file manager, at least in, for me, because it's much more stable than the older pack file manager. So here we have the download link, it can be downloaded here, we just click on it, on this github file. If you want to support him on Patreon, then of course do that, because he's a really good tool maker. And now we just um, download the file. Now I already did it, so I'm not going to download it, but you can download the file, uh, click on it, and save. Now I already did it. So normally you will have the file downloaded in your downloads uh, list so you go to downloads and here you have it rpfm 1.41 windows so the same thing um, with the other zip file we extract the files in the downloads folder for example so with 7-zip or another program you have and then you have this uh, folder so you have this extracted folder now I did the same thing as the official modding tools. I copied the files and I put them in my documents folder and I just renamed it to Rusted Back File Manager as you can find here. So I just open it. Good. Now that we have uh, that file or folder, we're going to open Rusted Back File Manager by clicking two times on it. Um, now uh, what we do is we go uh, to pack file in the menu we go to preferences and here where it says total war shogun 2 folder we add or we put or we browse towards our shogun 2 folder on our hard drive now as i said by standard or vanilla it's in your c hard drive program files 86 but some people sometimes install steam in a different folder and yeah of course you have to find the steam folder or installation folder there then so you have to browse to that folder where your steam folder is so you just put it and you put or you browse towards your shogun 2 folder and then i hear in the default game i put shogun 2 you can change it whenever you wish uh, you can also install other total war games like empire napoleon rome 2 attila and whatsoever so i put as default no shogun 2 here it says allow editing of CA pack files by default it's uh, not selected I uh, better to leave it not selected because uh, editing CA pack files they are um, it's a bit dangerous because sometimes if you edit the pack files itself and you make a mistake it's sometimes difficult to find back the mistake so you can corrupt it also the pack file so better to leave it off I select it because uh, I know what I have to uh, edit but otherwise just leave it like that 
check updates on start, select, check schema updates on start also, and the rest is more, uh, more for you as a user to choose what you want to do. And then you just click save. I already have everything, so uh, no problem with that. So the next part that we are going to do now, as this is part one, the basics, we are going to make a custom unit um, without making or making any 3D part or any texture. So that's for a later tutorial, we're just going to start with zero. So then you have an idea how the tools work. So I have a little idea and is to make a custom unit um, based on the, uh, the United States Marines, uh, the British Marines and the French Marines and just call them, just rename them with a different name, use the same uniform, but uh, different name, different stats. And then we're going to create a pack file with the uh, official modeling tool. So then you also have an idea how it works. And then we're going to use uh, the pack file manager to add uh, newer uh, packs to it if we are editing or adding new units to it. So the first thing that we are going to do as we are going to make a new custom unit is we go to binaries in the uh, official modeling tools. As I said, I put them in documents because otherwise it's possibly the, that if you left it in the C drive that it cannot write the mod pack. So my recommendation is put it in a documents folder or in your desktop folder, for example. So in the modding uh, folder, we go to binaries and then we scroll down until we find tweak.release.executable or dart .exe. So we double click on it to execute it. And then we go to tools and then we go to Dave, that is a database visual editor. Then we say yes. Okay, and then we do, we go back to view and then we click on table launcher. This will launch all the tables of the database of the game that we, uh, that it's using. So logically, if because we are going to use or create a new unit, where the first tab we have to use is the tab units or the table units. So we click two times on it, double click on it, okay, and we uh, enlarge it. So here you can see all the units that are going to be or that are used in the game in a normal vanilla game. Now I will use an example of Fall of the Samurai because I like the game more than <laughs> Shogun 2, uh, but it's the same for Shogun 2 or Rise of the Samurai. So we're going to use Fall of the Samurai examples, but um, it's the same for Shogun 2. So we're going to scroll down to the United States Marines. So here is all the table we need for the United States Marines. So what we are going to do is we're going to select all, push in, in elite United States Marines, copy, uh, control or copy, copy it. So control C on your keyboard, you add a record above, you scroll back up, and in the empty record we just paste now it will give you a warning like cannot set data for this field this primary key already exists just put ok we're going to now give it its own key now this key has been used for the tables so then uh, the tables or the game knows which unit uh, you're adding in game so we're going to call it the same naming convention as the units or as a fall of the same unit and that is Boshin. So they always start with Boshin. Now it's not an elite unit because we're going to call it, for example, uh, not United States Marines, but United States Line Infantry. Now here you can see it says Boshin Inf Elite. We're not going to use that naming convention, but the normal uh, Line Infantry naming convention and that is Boshin Inf Line. So I double click on it and I just copy paste, I mean copy first, control C, scroll back up and now we say control V, that's for pasting, and now we're going to call it United States Marines, uh, no sorry, not Marines, <laughs> Line Infantry. So that is the uh, that is the key name that it will be used for all the tables so then the game knows which unit you are talking about so here this is the on-screen name that it will use in-game uh, in-game so of course it's not 
the United States Marines, but United States Line Infantry. So this is the name that will be used in game. So if you hover over it or you click on it, it will say United States Line Infantry. Category is correct because it is a ranged infantry. The class is not an elite infantry, but a line infantry. So we have to change it. So here we have elite, heavy, light and line, infantry line we take, okay? Here we can change the cost of the unit, now let us compare it with the normal uh, line infantry. So the line infantry costs 720, so let us go to something in between, so we will say okay, a thousand. Multiplayer cost, multiplayer cost, so that's for multiplayer. And here again in multiplayer category we're going to change it from elite to uh, normal line infantry here we have the create time that's the amount of turns that it has to pass to create the unit now it's here it's one turn we can change it to to two to, to three it doesn't matter just let us leave it to one for the moment this is the create cost that's for single player and single player campaign that's also a thousand the upkeep costs let us put it down to 120 because it is not an elite unit so it doesn't make any sense there's the campaign action points there's the points or the the amount of um, miles you could say that it walks on the campaign map so of course the higher the value that the longer it can walk on the campaign or the faster it can go through the entire campaign so we just leave it vanilla 15 points you can change it how much you want this is voice, we're going to leave it vanilla because we don't want to use any Japanese uh, audio so it's better we just keep on using the uh, uh, United States Marine language that is American English because otherwise if we change it all it uh, will put itself to default and that is Japanese so in the unit description it will sadly for the moment all, uh, use the same description name for the United States Marines but if we change it to another description and it is possible you can do it but the problem is that the selection language when you select a unit it will sound in Japanese so we don't want it we don't want to, we want to leave it just in English so we leave that info pick we also leave it the same total cap uh, one moment that is a region unit resource that just means which resource it needs uh, in uh, you can see in the region now I don't know if they are from uh, here you have a Japanese one because the rest are still from uh, the old Napoleonic or old Napoleon total war uh, region unit uh, unit resource doesn't exist of course so you could just say um, Kyoto for example or in region unit resources you can change which territory you can only um, create that unit so for the moment we will leave it like nothing so you can recruit it everywhere total cap is 3 it means that you can only um, recruit that unit for 3 uh, 3 in total globally so we can maybe put it a little bit higher to 5 so the era is well it's not really necessary because the UI doesn't change uh, prestige is the amount of prestige you receive when you are recruiting that unit um, you can of course the higher the value the higher the prestige points you receive for that unit but of course the higher prestige you get the faster realm divides is going to unlock so that's not good either so just leave it vanilla zero armed citizenry just means yeah uh, those are rebels so when uh, rebels get spawned on the campaign map for example when a fa when a region is rebellion then you get a um, units that get spammed uh, or spawned on the campaign map well that means armed citizenry of course they are not armed citizenry so we just uh, leave it false this is total cap mp so that's everything that has to do with mp uh, campaign and battles we leave it on five just the same as the normal total cap for single player and campaign uh, unit type icon is elite infantry we're going to change it we're going to look down until we find line infantry so control c for copy and control v for pasting use on screen name we just keep it false 
um, just vanilla. Unit cast is modern. You can also change that to a lot of stuff, but in Fall of the Samurai it's only modern, traditional, or naval unit. So, but it's modern of course because it's an American line infantry, so it stays modern. So if you have a Japanese unit you want to make that is a traditional unit, of course, then you change it to, to traditional. That's of course up to you. This means additional building level requirement. That means if um, you add it to a barrack level or whatsoever, but you need an extra building to recruit that unit. So let's say it's Fall of the Samurai. So Fall of the Samurai always starts with BOS but for Boshin. We could say, okay, you need not only you can recruit it in a barracks, but you also need a training camp, for example. Otherwise, you can't recruit the units. I'm just going to leave it as it is. This is a religion requirement. This is more like uh, your um, your allegiance in uh, Fall of the Samurai. In Shogun 2, of course, it's a religion itself. But in Fall of the Samurai, you have three allegiances, Imperial, Independent, and Shogunate. Now, of course, it doesn't have any allegiance uh, because every allegiance uh, can recruit that unit, so we just keep it like for uh, like empty. This is a resource requirement that just means that you need an extra resource before you can build that unit. For example, coal, copper, cotton, iron, machines, silk, and tea. So remember, everything that is boss means for fall of the samurai. That means boshin. So we're going to leave this also empty. In Encyclopedia, we leave it true, even if it doesn't appear, but that's for maybe in a later moment or a later tutorial, but for a moment we don't need it. This is a unit recruited, recruiting movie, it's when a movie will play when you recruit the unit. Of course, they are all for um, Shogunate factions or Japanese, so you don't really have like um, a movie, uh, a little movie or video that you know shows like your uh, recruiting um, a unit that is an American or, or just a Western uh, unit, so we're just going to leave it empty. The unit index is made by the system itself, so you don't to do you don't have to do nothing. Uh, this one, don't worry about it. Leave it empty. Is male, of course, is true. Uh, if you want to make a female or I don't know what, you just put false. But normally it's a male uh, unit. So here's the number of audio variations. Now this will do nothing. So even if you change it, it doesn't matter because it's the sound is bound to the unit description. So even if you change it, it will not change the language or whatsoever. Just for you to, to let you know, so leave it like uh, the way it is here. In time I will explain how to add uh, new language sounds and whatsoever, but let us concentrate first on how to add uh, or make custom units. And when we finish, we just click on apply. Now that we finish, we go to the groupings military permissions. It is to let you know or to let the system know which groupings it is. So let us look for our unit. Double click on it to find for our unit. Okay, in line, in line, United States Line Infantry. That's our unit that we made. Now all the units in uh, Fall of the Samurai, they always use one specific military group. And that is the Boshin group. That's for all the factions. So it means that all the factions that are uh, assigned to this military group, or all units, units and factions, they re can recruit all the units that are assigned to that military group. So here it's Boshin, so it means that all Japanese factions, the vanilla ones, can all, all recruit that unit. And we click, on, we click on apply. Now units to exclusive faction permission, we are not going to use it, but I'm just going to explain that you can make units faction specific. So for example, I click on add records as we did before and we look for our unit and then um, let us look for our United States Line Infantry and I say okay I only want Saga to use it. Well, we look first for the CB Saga because that's the player and then we say allowed is true. Only them they are allowed. Then we go back to our other unit again, our new unit uh, in flying that's this line infantry and then we look for the saga that is the AI that's going to play it 
and we also say true. Now just in case that sometimes the game thinks okay even if I add it specifically that they alone can uh, recruit it we didn't really specify that other factions can't recruit it so in theory we have to assign all Boshin factions so everything that started with boss boss Aizu, boss Awaji Sumoto boss 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 are all the fall of the samurai factions so actually we have to boss Aizu going to do it up paste and then we have to say false okay next faction is boss Awaji Sumoto okay paste here back false and so on and so on so then it we really specify to the system to say okay only Saga can recruit that unit but I'm going to cancel everything uh, and I said no don't uh, save okay now we go to the next part and that is unit to unit abilities junctions so we double click on it we uh, enlarge we add a record and we're going to see what kind of uh, units use what ability now we see the United States Marines use the Neo fire ability and the suppression fire okay and we can do control C again or even do both of them we can click both of them control C and we paste and then we say yes override it we're going to look for our unit and that's our unit we just copy C again and control V and voila now they use also the same ability and we apply now the next part we go to the unit stats land it means you're going to give him special stats to the unit even if it's the same unit or looking the same as the marines we're just going to give it different stats of course so we enlarge unit stats land we add a record and here we go and look again for the United States Marines okay control C so we select the entire tab tap again and control V same thing can I set data for this field just okay <coughs> Um, and now we go to look for our unit that is the Boshin Infly United States Line Infantry okay so unit class is uh, it's not elite but it's line um, here it says the amount of men let's enlarge it to 240 men just for as an example it doesn't have horses of course neither guns the officer we can't keep it all vanilla it's a revolver with a sword that it's using uh, here's a standard pair now here it's a pretty nice thing that you can do go back because if you want to you can add two standard pairs but you need a special animation for it because it doesn't really work very well but I'm not going to talk yet about musician and standard pair and whatsoever but I'm, I am going to add the normal standard uh, Boshin or Fall of the Samurai standard pair that's the flag that the um, normal clans are using the square one so we're going to add that one here and at a time I will explain how to make your custom flags and whatsoever okay social mo model is okay euro line is perfect uh, man entity is not a heavy infantry we're just going to put it as a medium infantry this is that is the which animation it's using Boshi man rifle trained saber it means it's using a rifle and when it's in melee it's going to use a saber we're going to leave it like that in later time I will explain how to animate your own animation or how to use uh, animation that are already made and that you can find on the steam workshop or um, in some mods that they have equipment team we will use it also the same we also explain I will also also explain later in a later moment um, how to add new equipments like rifles and and drums and whatsoever uh, sabers so for the moment we just keep it all vanilla because we are just talking about adding a custom unit the armor we're going to keep it the same it's two um, armor audio is leather that's also perfect mount is all for horses everything that says mount is for horses ammo is for the guns so we don't have guns yet so we don't need it siege gun either artillery model gun type can also be empty 
this can stay the same with rifle uh, this one we're going to put it lower so we say okay this is 45 marksmanship and the reload is 40 because it's not an elite unit the marines are elite and they of course fire better and faster so but that is for you i just showed an example so we all keep it the same this is the projectile it uses which type and what kind of you know a lot of stats that you know even projectiles have their own stats and you can create them uniquely for every unit or for every uh, musket for example that you use in game there's the amount of, of ammo that it has i leave it for 15 you can change it the amount that you want yourself we all leave that the same let's put melee tag a little bit lower like at eight or something and we say charge bonus is uh, let's say 12. melee bonus versus cavalry is when you are in melee against cavalry we're also going to lower it down to five and defense we also lower it to five melee defense shield bonus is maybe interesting if you have units with shields so then it has an extra defense uh, bonus um, this we all keep uh, vanilla is this skeleton the grenades if you use the grenades uh, skirmishes uh, unit training level it's well trained you can use between uh, rabble mob poorly trained trained well trained elite so we leave it to well trained morale will put it a little bit lower because it's not an elite unit but we put it to nine that's the main morale of course rank depth is the amount of ranks so we have three rank levels so we can leave that how it is this is close formation spacing horizontal is the amount of space you have between every soldier now in my uh, mod of course uh, as also we saw in the american civil war and in most military tactics you know they stand shoulder to shoulder a 0.8 is not shoulder to so shoulder there's a bit of space but i leave that for you to change it and you can play with it so that is the horizontal one so next to each other and this is the in between ranks space you could say this i also made it much lower in my mod so that's loose formation space so two and three horizontal and vertical when you're in loose formation it's of course there is more space this is for the horses the base density is 10 that's all good we leave everything vanilla that's perfect card mode we leave everything false can play stakes well in theory that's uh it doesn't define here you define it by the abilities but that's not for that's maybe for another tutorial um we all leave the same so that's not a problem so we have hydium height medium woodland we said true uh, it means that it can hide in uh woods in scrub hiding we put false long grass false hiding buildings is false they don't use the buildings like in a Total of war or empire total war so it's not really necessary can stalk false can snipe false does fire mounted by default is of course when you are having dragoons or horses so you don't need that so this is the three spot distance it's linked to this high medium woodland so we put three it means a uh, true it means that the enemy units will spot the unit that is in trees 50 meters so starting when they are passing 50 meters then they spot the enemy unit um, so if you hide your army uh, or infantry or that one in a woodland or in woods it will it will not be spotted until an army an enemy army army uh, is 50 min uh, 50 meters in distance of the unit then they will see the units otherwise not same for scrap distance and long grass uh, distance can be a map stealth not necessary campaign map policy bonuses is also not necessary and of course the discipline is true of course because they are disciplined uh, that's all not necessary inspire we put false because it's not an elite unit it means it's just a unit that inspires the rest of the army um, i've put false because you know if you remember um, the french old cards you know they were already an inspiring thing in the french army and we saw for example in the battle of waterloo that they when the french card retreated 
uh, that the entire army got you know just routed because of you know they saw like that their their guard starts retreating so you know it was an inspiring an inspiring thing for them and they started retreating and they were scared of course so they just retreated, retreated themselves see these letters we say true of course it actually just means that they climbed the walls so they don't use actually siege ladders uh, heat resistance, coal resistance um, put all false, pike wall false, pike square false also part, uh, you know uh, it's also a part of the abilities so you don't need to add it here, you can add it to abilities is immune to attrition, you can put false, true I'll just leave it for, for the moment, I, I will put it false voilà. So here we have the uh, campfire mass, uh, mounted whilst moving, that's for the dragoons for example, or carbine cavalry, we don't need that. Musician 2 is interesting if you have for example two uh, standard bearers, regiment and national one, and then you can use this one just to add a musician. So then you have three uh, units actually, like two standard bearers and a musician. This is for the cannons, ammo, ammo. All ranks fire means that all ranks fire, of course. I put false, it means that only the first rank will fire in vanilla game. So, with uh, some abilities, of course, you can use two rank fire or rank by fire. So, that means that one rank fires, reload, second rank fires, reload, third rank fires, sorry, and reload. And guerrilla deployment just means that they they can deploy outside the deployment zone just before the battle so normally you are bound to that uh, square or uh, part where you can add your army to deploy them well if you have that enabled it means they can deploy behind the lines so you can deploy them actually everywhere on the map it doesn't matter this is all audio so we are not going to touch that um, can climb fast, can fire at buildings, can fire at ground that's more for guns armor piercing missile attack not interest not necessary so we just leave for the rest uh, vanilla close formation spacing variation just means that it uh, is the variation of uh, how the units stand so the lower the value the more all orderly they look or more the same they look while the more higher the value of course the more like uh, chaotic they, they look on, on the lines on the rank you could say so this is for close formation and this is for loose formation you can also add loose formation so I put it false so for the moment if you want to change it you can change it also so that is it <coughs> and we're going to click apply when we finish okay and now after this one we're going to add the uniforms so now we go to uniforms we click on it uh, we add a record of course and we're going to look for the United States um, mm -hmm. the United States Marines those are those ones we control C to copy it and we click on it all and control V we write here again OK and here we're going to call it uh, because you cannot uh, name uh, the same uniform even if I use it for a different unit it cannot be it cannot have the same name so you have to change the name always otherwise uh, you will get a crash so we will call it the uniform name as Boshin United States line line infantry so the unit we're going to look for it as the unit that we made that is line United States line infantry that's the one we made in the units tables and the file name is just a name that the 3d name that um, you use as a uniform name so um, later on when we uh, when you have when we will learn how to add custom units uh, there will be an intermediate part where um, you can assemble your own uh, unit parts in the units editor that is also uh, available in the uh, official official modding tools and there you can just um, use existing uh, unit parts and, and assemble your own um, uniform if you want to for the moment we just use the American uh, the uh, American Marines uniform 
and now we have it we just okay we have the uniform name that's um, the unique one of course we cannot have the same name we know that and we apply we have everything now in uniform to faction colors if you click double on it it actually um, means that you can give your um, uniform a specific color because if you do not specify that then it thinks that um, I mean the system thinks like oh um, I'm just going to use the faction colors of that unit of the, the faction and put it on the unit uniforms so here you can see that the United States Marines have uh, a different or a custom color applied to it so I'm going to leave it like that so then you will see in game that they will have the colors of the faction and not of the color of you know the uniform of the United States so we will do that in a later time and then you will see that when we change it then it will have the blue American uniform so we're just going to cancel it for the moment so now we finished with that and there's one last thing we need to do is to go to uh, CV, uh, CDI R CDIR unit qualities double click on it and it just said it this is more to um, let the system know like okay what kind of quality is your unit so in unit ski we go back to our uh, pre-made unit that we made in the units tables in the group key we're going to call it of course modern line infantry in the config key it's of course Boshin. so we're going to look for the quality what kind of quality it has so uh, let's say a line imperial is 700 so we're going to give it the same as the imperial line infantry Japanese one so it's just to see or it, it's just a calculation when you're doing auto resolve or uh, to see the uh, balance bar so what kind of quality units you have so we're just going to after that click on apply and that's actually it you already made your custom unit so now what are we going to do is we have to make a mod pack so we're going to close the um, launcher the twig that released and now what we need to do is we need to make um, a launcher um, a mod pack the reason why a mod pack is if you go back to your uh, c drive where your uh, game is installed so we go to steam steam apps common shogun 2 data you see you have boot up pack uh, bp uh, underscore original or orich dot pack now those are all standard pack files uh, from the game itself so we're not going to use that or add our custom unit in one of those tabs so normally it's all in the data dot pack there we have all the database but we're not going to use it we're going to uh, to make it easier for us and if you want to update it or add it on a steam workshop we make a mod pack you can name it the way you want so we're going to minimize it and now we go to Bob so in the same moddings folder that you have we go to binaries and we go to bob.release.xa or executable and we double click on it and we just wait until it opens so here it opens we go to empire design data and now we're going to select all the tables that we used to make our units so first we go to units of course and we select here all and you see all the v's are there uh, we go to uh, units to groupings military permission because uh, we uh, gave them the portion military group uh, we go to unit to unit abilities because we added or gave our custom unit abilities of course like uh, nail fire and uh, suppressing fire if I remember correctly then we go to unit stats land we choose that one also because we give them different stats and it's all up I mean it's it's part you, you're obligated to to use unit stats land you cannot do it without it so so unit stats land it's uh, uh, chosen and then we have uniforms because we gave them uh, the uh, American Marines uniform and the last one we did was the uh, CDR, uh, CD, uh, IR unit qualities that XML okay we click on here also so now we have all the unit parts or the tables 
chosen that we need to make our mod pack so the last thing we need to do is go to retail and we click on data so as you see we select the data if we open it you see you can see it will create a mod.pack and what we are going to do now is we're going to let the system uh, say like hey create now a mod pack so we just click on start okay as you can see everything is green that means that everything has been correctly done if you have orange it means that something didn't work very well but it still uh, made the, the pack file or whatsoever but with a warning if it's red it means it's failed so as you can see everything is green and everything is made so it's perfect so we're going to exit the program now in the same modding folder you have a binaries max exporter route data retail working data in retail if you open it you can see we have a mod pack so that's the same mod pack that we used uh, or the same one that we created actually so you can rename it and for example i will rename it to uh, uh, my units so here it is so now it calls my uh, now we renamed it to my units so what we're going to do is we're going to select it going to copy it and we put it in our data folder so in the data in the games folder so again C program files 86 steam uh, steam steam apps common total war shogun 2 data and we're going to paste the mod pack so the one we created here this one we're going to put it and paste it in that data folder and as you can see my units.pack is now being added and now we're going to see if it works so now we need to run the game yeah. so uh, let's go to steam and view games library of course show them to and play and as you can see the mod manager goes on so if you don't have mods normally it will just start directly but now the game knows like hey there is a mod pack so um, do you wish to enable it so of course we're going to enable the my units that pack so we enable it and we say launch shogun 2 you know we're going to wait until the game runs Okay, and now we are in the main menu of uh, Shogun 2. We're going to test it by going to single player, custom battle. Uh, we already have Saga enabled, so uh, let's go to defending side, whatever. Uh, okay, Saga. And let us, here you can see. Here you can see down. Uh, here you have the elite infantry, of course, but we know that we change it from elite to line infantry and here you can see here you have the united states line infantry so of course we're going to put it uh, if you see the stats morale melee attack if you click on the united states marines it has different stats so you made your first custom unit and we're going to test it in game so uh, that's a lot of units for testing purposes of course okay um, let's put summer yeah, okay. 20 minutes hard whatever okay just ready
so we are here now in the game itself and as you can see here this is the United yes, States Marines yes, um, okay looks very nice and here we have the sir, United, sir, United, United sir. States Line Infantry now remember I told you that I didn't add the faction colors you know to specify them as blue here you can see again that the colors are um, taken by the faction color so they are of course kind of red uh, you can also hear that the sound sir, is States English Marines, it uses the same uh, sound as the United States Marines because if you were changing the unit description uh, it will change to Japanese and we don't want to so you can also see that the we are ready uh, to defend sir the standard bearer has been added and if you see very careful in the normal United States Marines they don't have a standard bearer and see we added a standard bearer in the unit it also has uh, more units as you can see 240 units while the United States Marines has 200 units so yeah this is uh, the first part of this tutorial um, I will see later on if I can uh, start adding a new tutorial how to add those colors like to, to be blue of course and then after that we're going to add like the same way for the British and French uh, and then we will use a uh, rusted pack file manager to add existing tables into the uh, modding pack we already have so we don't have to always create a new one new one new one much easier that way and then of course you also know how to use the unit so let us move a bit forward just to see uh, an example uh, ah. they are walking like normal good so that was it for the first tutorial it's a small one and uh, hopefully later on I will uh, add the other one where we come where we are going to add the colors to uh, those units to have a specific color and not to use the faction color uh, from the faction itself. So that was it for today and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like to uh, to help out you can always uh, help uh, or support me on Patreon. Uh, I'm going to add much and much more tutorials um, so then all of you can also start modding and make your own mods. This is for Fall of the Samurai but you can use the same way for Shogun too. So, uh, I hope uh, this video has helped you a little bit how to make a custom unit without touching a 3D uh, um, without touching 3D uh, programs or whatsoever so we, this is the truly basics you can have to start to add a custom unit after that we will go a little bit more advanced and more advanced and more advanced so uh, well see you guys in later okay.